uh, while the world talks to us about supply chain uh, disruptions and things like that, we're still trying to get ships in queue at port. And we're still trying to work through those efficiencies. So as we head towards celebrating 50 years time at all levels of our structure. So thank you once again. I thank the organizers, PNG SME Magazine, Stratcom, Andrew and team, the Lamana team for being up so early this morning. And with that, I'll get straight into our program and call on our first speaker in acknowledging our major sponsor for the breakfast this morning, Mr. Greg Pawson. Kina Bank Managing Director, please make him welcome. Great speech there and uh, hello everyone. Um, what a fantastic opportunity and congratulations to the SME Corporation and all of the delegates that have been participating over the course of the week. Uh, it's a fantastic testimony, I think, about the future of the MSME and SME sectors here in PNG. Um, look, for, for us, uh, very excited to be the principal sponsor. SME, for us, is a, a very, very big focus uh, for the organisation at the moment. We're working on some really, I think, exciting things to help support the growth of the sector here. Everybody tends to talk about the resources sector in PNG, and that's the key to the country's prosperity, but as John touched on, it really is about financial inclusion, and it's about having a formal small business, micro SME and, and SME sector in the country that can flourish and, and create prosperity, I think, for everybody. Um, so very humbled by uh, what I've seen this week in terms of some of the displays, the excitement, uh, and just simply the knowledge, I think, and focus of those that are prepared to make a success of their businesses. Our strategy uh, as a homegrown PNG bank is really reflective of this. Uh, we've got several key initiatives underway at the moment which form part of our broader environmental social governance framework and really to be seen as being a, a good corporate citizen to PNG and supporting, as I said, the growth of financial inclusion in the country. Uh, some of these include Absolutely that, first and foremost. So financial inclusion last year, in conjunction with our partnership, we brought close to 175,000 new people into the formal banking sector in PNG. We're working very closely with my bank and co-branding in a number of new locations. Uh, we're talking to Oro Province about Pop and Detta, uh, Millen Bay, Alatau. Uh, we're looking at potentially going to Taree Inga, which uh, should please the Prime Minister, it's a shame he's not here to hear that, to hear that yet. Uh, and a number of other smaller locations, Marprek in East Sepik as well. These are hubs that are really developing and becoming quite important trading hubs within their respective provinces, but uh, do not really have good access to a broader banking uh, opportunity. So really pleased to be working, in, as I said, in conjunction with Nation Nationwide Microfinance Bank. Um, on that potential opportunity. We're in the process at the moment through our uh, Kina Funds management business of developing a SME Law Fund. For as long as I've been in PNG, uh, over a decade, we've been talking about this. Um, to support them by becoming effectively a seed investor. There's a lot of criticism, I think, towards the banks about the fact that, or the perception that we don't lend to the small business sector. In fact, we do, but more often than not, the problem is many small businesses don't have capital. They don't have any e equity. And, and as a bank, we're, we're never going to take on 100% of the risk. We'll always be, be asking 
the business owner to, to put in some capital themselves. So we're really excited about that. We're hoping to, to be able to launch that over the second half uh, of this year. Um, we're also developing a, a special loan product for the SME sector, which will have a carded rate, uh, similar to how we price home loans, um, a special rate for those borrowing up to a million dollars. Unfortunately, we didn't get to participate in the government-sponsored scheme, but we, we think this will be a good solution, extending the term out uh, in a lower rate than we currently offer today. Um, we're developing also an advisory services model for small businesses, and this is a broad range of services from even just putting together a business plan, a cash flow, helping to build a website, developing a social media strategy that we can do um, with access that we have to many other businesses out there that we bank that provide those services today and will act as the coordination point um, to, to, to assist customers with those types of services moving forward as well. Uh, and the final one which we're really excited about, and this is sort of in in line with our aspiration to be uh, a leading digital bank here in PNG is to develop uh, an innovation hub for tech, small business tech businesses that have great ideas and concepts that support that sort of digital economy as we move forward as well. So excited about the future, working on lots of things despite the doom and gloom of the pandemic, which I was hoping would be uh, well over by now, but it looks like it's gonna to extend to the balance of this year uh, excited to be thinking about launching some of these products and services to support the growth of the sector over the balance of uh, 2021 and certainly into 2022. And the final comment I did want to make is the Prime Minister often talks about PNG becoming the food bowl for Asia. You know, and I think that is absolutely possible. Um, two years ago, I was in Christchurch, my hometown in New Zealand, and there was a big sign outside a cafe there that said PNG coffee sold here. You know, the, the organic produce that we, we have and the, the sheer scale and volume of it that we have, if we can just get that right uh, to, to a point where um, we can really make it work, uh, this country has such an opportunity ahead of it, it really does. So thank you again for the opportunity uh, for sponsoring today. If you have any questions or you'd love to hear a little bit more about what I talked about, please reach out to us over the course of the day. I know today's the final day, but what a tremendous week it's been. Thank you. So Papua New Guineans have dreams, and this generation is gonna dream just as much. So in this room, I see a lot of dream makers. All the moving parts of the economy, all that contribute to the possibilities of a young person who has a dream. And to Papua New Guineans, I encourage you to step up. Relationship as part of the mission towards 50 years old. I encourage you to step up, take ownership, increase your knowledge, pay your price in practice and improve the standards that we have to improve in this The standards of social behavior all get to something one time. Everything is together. I'm going to encourage you all to go back and in this next four years SME Corporation is going to back you to create these sort of things in your own provinces, Logat and Blue Play at your economy. We cannot just rely on the city and the NCDC as the hub of the country. Representative of United Nations Development Program, Mr. Dirk Wagner. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to acknowledge the Prime Minister, but I think he's, uh, he's still on his way, but it's a real pleasure to be here today. Um, I'd like to acknowledge, uh, first of all, um, all the representatives from the private sector, from the MSMEs, 
but also from our development partners, Australian High Commissioner, um, all guests also um, who have joined us from, from the provinces. Um, it's a real privilege and honor to be again here today and share a few thoughts during um, the World MSME Day, which we're actually celebrating today. Um, I take this opportunity first to commend actually MSMEs for their remarkable resilience during this COVID crisis. I think it has hit us all very hard and um, I must say I also must commend the government for some measures they have taken to contain the spread of COVID. And um, as the previous speakers have also acknowledged, I guess we are still in the midst uh, of this pandemic. It's not yet over. Um, those restrictions, I think, which have been initially imposed were quite necessary to, um, to pro protect us, to protect the health of all the citizens, but at the same time, they have, of course, tremendously impacted the national economy, but also the global economy. They have led to disruptions of supply chains and global trade. Last year, UNDP, in collaboration with the Department of Planning, conducted a a first socioeconomic impact assessment to actually see what the impact was um, of the COVID crisis on households but also on businesses. We did survey about 3,000 SMEs across all 89 districts of the country and the survey showed that 75% of all SMEs reported that they were adversely affected by the pandemic. And the vast majority of them, about 90%, have quoted travel restrictions, which really had an impact. We had a chance to present those findings to government. Um, that was an opportunity, very welcome. And um, we have also noted that some of the recommendations we actually made were taken up by government and have informed the way going forward. As we then thought, we had just sort of managed to get through the brunt of it. The next, the next wave has actually hit us, and uh, some of you might be also aware that we're expecting a third wave. But um, we, were, we were hit by, by a second wave, but I must say, and I believe that the containment measures this time around were much better calibrated. So it allowed um, the MSMEs and the private sector at large to, to navigate uh, the pandemic much better. Um, another survey was conducted by the World Bank in March and uh, it has already indicated that business and also the MSMEs were better in coping with the COVID crisis. They have shown a greater level of resilience. And we are currently in a process of doing a major second survey which should hopefully be released uh, by quarter three so we can see a little bit how, how the impact has, has developed over time, so we can basically compare the situation a year ago and um, the situation now. But for me, the key learning is, it has really shown the pandemic that what counts are resilient economies. Only if economies are resilient to shocks, they can um, you know, continue to provide for the livelihoods of people. And I guess the whole world learned that economies or the, the world economy was not as resilient as we actually thought. Um, in Papua New Guinea, um, where social structures are built on family relationships and cultural ties, the recovery of its people and the economy as a whole is obviously linked to the small or to the micro, small and medium sized enterprises. The MSMEs are in large parts of the country's a driver for economic development they give employment and they provide for the livelihoods. They provide essential services and they contribute to the productivity. Um, the, the crisis has shown how important a diversified economic basis because it has really a very significant positive impact on economic productivity and growth. Um, we know where governments globally have supported MSMEs, millions have been lifted in the past out of poverty. So we are again very pleased to know that the government is committed to economic diversification, um, particularly on efforts promoting and enabling uh, environment for MSMEs towards more inclusive and equitable growth. But this economic diversification and this promotion of MSMEs must have also 
green economy pathways at its core. We must move, and I think that's clear to all of us, to a low carbon and circular economic pathways. And I think the economic and innovative power that rests within MSMEs can be a very important driver for that. We need to work collectively to minimize greenhouse gas emission and to embrace higher resource efficiency through reuse, recycling, and less waste, which is often also for smaller enterprises a real way of actually saving resources and of becoming more profitable. Such ambition, again, is largely captured in, in Papua New Guinea's climate change roadmap and also in its enhanced nationally determined contribution, which is the articulation of what the country wants to do to reach the, the Paris climate targets. However, those commitments need to be translated into practice. A sustainable diversification, we believe, offers the potential for new employment opportunities. We heard already from Greg, uh, there's a huge potential on, on organic products. Um, Papua New Guinea can become a powerhouse for many green commodities if those sectors are more appropriately supported. Investing in human capital is, of course, also extremely critical. UNDP publishes annually what we call our flagship human development report, and as, at its core is the so-called Human Development Index. The Human Development Index is a very simple, some claim maybe a reductionist formula, but it, it looks at life expectancy, mean years of schooling, and income per capita, and puts that together into one index because it's a very good proxy for showing the development level of a certain country. Um, Papua New Guinea has unfortunately stagnated for many, many years on that human development index. It is actually the country last ranked uh, in the entire Pacific and, and uh, continues to be on what we call the low human development band. There are huge impediments still to health, to education, and income opportunities here in the country, particularly for women. We are, of course, also very committed to promote women entrepreneurship whether it's working through markets or running small businesses. We work with district markets, helping women to improve ways in doing business, boost savings, and also connect them to appropriate financial services. Having access to income through micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises gives women voice and confidence to make their own decisions and also to pursue emerging opportunities. And women's success as entrepreneurs brings a lot of benefits to themselves, their families, and the country overall economic situation. I recall two years ago, the Prime Minister was actually speaking about his mother, who used to be a micro-entrepreneur, selling buns at a market in the Highlands, and that this small income she generated actually enabled him then to pursue you know, an education. And he said, I stand in front of you because my mother was a micro-entrepreneur and she had the chance you know, to generate some income. We also heard of the role of technology and digitalization, and that's of course an area where we think we need to provide additional support to make sure that Papua New Guinea can actually take full advantage of digital opportunities. Again, the COVID-19 crisis has, I think, shown how important those tools are, and I guess we all spend most of our days in Zoom meetings and uh, many of our staff that work from home. And I think it has really shown overnight how important it is to be digitally connected and the ones who are not connected, they may miss out. You need electronic payment systems, you need access to electronic finance possibilities. All of that is necessary to keep your business running. So we need to invest more to enable MSMEs to harness the opportunities of the digital transformation. So by closing, I, I just want to again assure that the United Nations and the UNDP remain fully committed to supporting Papua New Guinea to build a more viable and sustainable MSME sector, to boost green economic growth and to pursue sustainable development that leaves no one behind because that's our obligation. Thank you very much. We're going to go straight to a uh, video presentation from Mr. Stephen Knapp of Business Link Pacific.
from New Zealand. Thank you. Kia ora koutou katoa. I'm Steve Knapp, Director of Business Link Pacific. I'm delighted to join you in this value celebration to recognize the critical role of small and medium enterprises in PNG. Small businesses comprise over 80% of the private sector in all over the world. As such, MSMEs in PNG have a crucial role in generating economic growth, creating jobs, and tackling poverty. Successful small businesses can help to reduce income inequalities, promote gender equality, and contribute to economic, social, and environmental sustainability. SME Week in PNG provides us with an excellent platform to recognize the importance of local leadership in growing a successful SME sector. Likewise, Business Link Pacific acknowledges the importance of PNG's SMEs in building a solid and sustainable Pacific region. At BLP, we work daily to support business owners to improve business outcomes. We seek to understand the multiple challenges you, your staff and communities face. These include a difficult operating environment, access to finance, finding good staff and accessing good quality business advice. Business Link Pacific is funded by the New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade and also supported by Australian DFAT and is delivered by DT Global. BLP assists SMEs in PNG and other Pacific Island countries to address gaps in their business and pursue new opportunities, to create jobs, take advantage of new technology and access local business advisory support to improve and grow their businesses. The current global environment and the impact of COVID-19 pandemic poses new and unprecedented challenges to small businesses all over the world. In May and June this year, we surveyed more than 500 small business owners across the Pacific region. We wanted to hear from SMEs the extent of the impact of COVID-19 on their business to identify what support is currently available and to learn the strategies that SMEs have employed to survive. We wanted to understand the adoption and use of technology by SMEs in the face of this crisis and the availability and need for additional business finance. Responses from the small business community in the Pacific Islands confirmed the devastating impact caused by the global COVID crisis, but on a positive note, also identified pockets of opportunity. Unfortunately, 86% of respondents reported a decrease in their business. Half of the business surveyed reported it had already closed down or expected to permanently close down in the future. However, 38% reported some positive results. These were primarily businesses in the services and agricultural industries, which appear to be adapting to the new business climate utilizing new technology and digital marketing techniques to cater to new markets both locally and online. However, one message from the SME sector is loud and clear. The need for financial and business support is huge and unprecedented. Since the COVID-19 crisis began, SMEs appear to be considering a wide range of finance options. More than 80% of SMEs surveyed are currently seeking financial support. This is mainly for working capital, but also to maintain jobs and keep the doors open. Our full report has more details and interesting insights from the Pacific Islands Financial Survey, and you can download a copy from our website at www.businesslinkpacific.com. The celebration today of SMEs extends beyond PNG and encourages us to further develop regional partnerships to explore opportunities and solutions for the SME sector across the whole Pacific region, and continue to acknowledge the importance of prosperity I hope you will join us at Business Link Pacific and in Australia and New Zealand to extend this celebration that has started in PNG this week and to join us this coming Sunday, 27th of June, to celebrate the United Nations International SME Day. To mark International SME Day, at BLP we will be opening applications for a second round of adaptation grants for small and medium-sized businesses throughout the Pacific. The adaptation grants will be available to eligible businesses in the Cook Islands, Fiji, Kiribati, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, and for the first time in Vanuatu. The second round of adaptation grants follows a very successful first round launched last December and funded by the New Zealand government. 200 adaptation grants are currently being dispersed across the region by BLP and DT Global. 
We understand that small and medium-sized businesses throughout the Pacific are still hurting financially from the impacts of COVID-19. This second round of grants will help affected businesses with funding to support new products and services and projects to adapt to the changing environment. The adaptation grants will enable SME owners and entrepreneurs to continue to be agents of development in their communities, bringing innovation and demand-driven solutions to both urban and rural areas. In particular, the adaptation grants will encourage women and young entrepreneurs, whom we often see exhibiting outstanding performance in growing their businesses in the face of mounting challenges. As a united region, we rely on SME owners and entrepreneurs' in-depth knowledge of the needs and demands of local communities and to offer unique services that can transform communities while also preserving local identities. Hari Ra, and goodbye to you all. All the restrictions and things that come with the pandemic. Forward to working with our agencies, really listening to, to the projects that you have, what you want to achieve, and looking at the resources and letting you know what resources we have available. So honesty, as well as brutal honesty, is going to play a role as we bring the national government up to, to its standard and its rightful place in the SME sector. With that, I'd like to welcome two staff in the building of the nation. We must harness that today. So that's a task that the corporations accepted and taken on in, in integration that we will plug back in to all provinces, respect them for their own economic gardens, create and work towards creating such a better environment for business and economics to be fluid in each sector. It's not perfect, I understand, but one of the greatest things about time periods such as this coming out of a crisis is that the contribution that you leave will always leave a lasting imprint in your own memories. And the contribution to our path towards celebrating 50, 50 years in Papua New Guinea is going to be something you will always remember. So I encourage you to cherish that thought today. And in all your employees, within all the sectors across government, across big business, small businesses, we thank you for your daily service. We ask you to step up because we're going to need to work together far better as we work towards celebrating 50 years as an independent nation. We will go through elections next year, which is a normal cycle. I know we're all preparing budgetary-wise in the back engine rooms. These are realities of economic paths that we're on and the, and the timing of nations. And these are cycles that we go through. So prepare well. Our people will go and vote and choose the best leaders. We are an evolving nation as well. Our voters are going through their own levels of education. There is improvement. I know we all wish things could be faster, but there is improvement. And as I look around this room, I want to thank all of those who have built their careers over the last 15, 20, 30 years, even 45 years in the country, and your contribution to, to the big companies that have been here all this time, your contribution to the education systems in ensuring that your children get educated, your contributions right across the board in turning up daily that keeps the country rolling. And I'd like to encourage all the employees in the country and thank them for their service as today and going towards our 50th anniversary. It's going to be a wonderful time. Acknowledge that it's coming. Don't allow it to hit us by shock. 50 years is a milestone we must celebrate really, really well. So four play year, 35,040 hours, you may walk out your garden now. The Papua New Guinea economy is our garden. So from our trade and commerce minister who couldn't make it this morning, I, I pass on his acknowledgement for the SME week, his gratitude to all the SMEs, all the Oga the province, you come. We pass on the gratitude from my minister and our Prime Minister has made it. We are thankful for that as a leader of the country. A very interesting time.